Alright, hello and how the hell are you guys? Welcome back to the Greasy Paint Channel. This is episode 8 of season 2. And after this one, there's just two more left and that's the finale. So, you should know by now, get your brushes out, lay out your paints, pick a canvas size of your choice. And for all you beginners out there, I want to remind you all, you need a thin white base medium for this technique. It's very essential and you can use liquid white, magic white, um, or maybe, best yet, you made your own like I did with a little bit of linseed oil. Just be sure no matter what you're using, you shake it up real good because after time, a lot of the oil and the pigment can separate and you don't want that and you want it to be mixed very well. As a matter of fact, as soon as I get this thing open, if I can, I'm going to give it a good stir with this wooden spoon. I can get it open. Now, sometimes this linseed oil acts like glue and it really, really makes it difficult to open. A little later. Oh. <laughs> you dumb bastard. Oh boy. Bear with me, folks. I need to clean this up right now before my wife sees it. Otherwise, she's going to beat the devil out of me. One pair of pants later. All right, so we got some clean clothes on our back, some old clothes soaking in the wash, and our thin white medium off the floor and onto, well, most of our canvas. But it also occurred to me, my wife is going to see this anyway, so hopefully she understands that we don't make mistakes. We hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell if this is your first time painting with us or just stopping by to have a laugh. And for all my current subscribers, please hit that share button. You would be amazed what wonders a click of a button does for the support for this channel. And everybody always asks me, Kenny, what colors do you use in your paintings? Well, they're always going to scroll at the bottom of your screen like they're doing right now. Otherwise, click the description below to find out more detail. Now, I have my canvas here. It was grayed with uh, gesso, a gray color gesso, I should say. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it helps me identify which spots on my canvas still need to be covered with the thin white medium? And I think around that corner there, and we should be good. Now, what are we going to paint today? Well, I'll admit, it's been a while since I uploaded a video. I've kind of had a, uh, a painter's block, having trouble trying to come up with a good painting. So, I was at my mother's house recently, and I found this little gem. This lovely traditional painting, very old, uh, actually belonged to my grandparents originally, if you can't tell, and they didn't take care of it very well. Uh, I cannot, for the life of me, find out who the artist is. Uh, maybe it's blocked by the frame, it's certainly not on the back, and my mom will kill me if I try to take the canvas out of the frame, so I'm not doing that. I spent a lot of time online trying to research who this was, so if you know or you recognize this painting, comment below. And I thought it would just make a good painting today, trying uh, for the wet-on-wet wet technique. So what do you say we do it? I'm just going to place it right over here as my reference. And as we paint along, I'll show you the picture again. So let's grab our palette, make sure our liquid white medium, or a thin white medium, I should say, since I made it myself. Not too much, not too little. You want to make sure this is very, very, very thin. As you place this stuff and prime your canvas with it, you want to make sure you're doing it with a very firm brush stroke. I'm just going to get some extra paint off my brush. And really hard. Just get real in there. And get tough with it. Okay. Now I think we can start. Finally! Now I'll just go into a little bit of phthalo blue, tap once, tap twice, three or four times. I don't know. Because if we look at that painting again, a lot of the blue sky, the stronger side, is on the left side, so that's where I'm going to start off. All right, just using X strokes or figure of eight, you can do whatever you want. And as the paint mixes with the thin white medium, it gets lighter and lighter, which is what I want as we head down and towards the right. And never ceases to amaze me how fun this actually is. Seeing that paint mix and blend and just spread so easily. Especially since we're using a thick paint. 
you don't have that thin white medium or even a clear medium on there, it would this would not blend as easily. You can't move the paint around that well. All right. That goes right about down there, I think. And there's water in that painting, right? Water towards the foreground and the bottom there. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to mix tap once again like this and just tap a little bit of green in there, just a little bit. All right. Now, when I whenever I make water, I always start on the bottom corner holding the brush vertical but moving it horizontal, keeping that that brush straight vertically and going like this. Sweeping from the outside in. There we go cuz if we look at the painting again, we have a sheen of light right in the middle. So, I'm only going to go towards the middle here and there we go. I'll take a shop towel now and get some extra paint off the brush that we're not going to need for the next step. Right. And we have some harsh brush strokes in the sky and the water, so we're just going to get rid of those right now. I'll start in the light side first and work my way into the dark. There we are. Using X strokes again to blend the sky a little bit more. As we go down here into our water, we still want this uh, open light there. So we're just going to lightly go through it like that. Very lightly, or at least not as hard as we were sweeping before. Let's look at the original painting once again. Ah, I see clouds more towards the right side. So let's put those in. I'm going to go into a little bit of my thin white medium, which I have in a tray on my table down here. Just a little bit, like that. I'm going to take it into the regular titanium white. This is going to thin the paint out a bit. And wow, it's a lot of clouds over there. I, I see. Okay, so let's just go for it. Start from all the way in the right and just spin the brush. And you know what? You could really use uh, one inch brush for this if you wanted to. I decided I just decided on the fan brush because it's it's my favorite to make clouds with. Alright. Just keep spinning circles in there. Just keep spinning circles. He's a circle. You can even do that. What is that? Kind of looks messy right now, but don't worry, when we blend this all out. It'll make sense. I am not confident this video is going to be good. Now, I'm going to take a clean, dry, a different two inch brush just because it's clean and dry. And I'm just going to spin it around lightly where I made these clouds. There we are. And after you do this, Give it a little fluff like that, the way you move your brush. After you do this, step back from your painting. Step back, see if you like it, if there's anything you want to add on. And I've decided that, you know what, into some thin white medium again. I am actually going to, yeah, make some clouds a little bit stronger down here. There we go. It looks like where it needs to be. I'm just making circles with the brush and I'm varying the sizes here. Turning the brush, sometimes only using the corner. When I teach how to make the clouds, I, I always say just use the corner. Just use the corner of the brush because it's very important to get into that habit. We're gonna have to fluff that out again, obviously. All right. All, all I'm doing is making thin white clouds. I'm spending a lot of time with it and I promise we'll get moving. Okay, here we are. Fairly clean dry brush again. And this is a very light touch. When you fluff and blend clouds in, 
it is ridiculous how light the touch is. You have, you have hundreds of hairs on your brush and you're really trying to use only like four or even, you know, possibly two, two hairs. <laughs> two hairs and some air. Yeah, does that sound familiar? All right. And the same thing too. Just like a whisper, back and forth. You can't even hear the brush on the canvas now. There we are. Whoop. Let's fix that shit. A lot more puffy. Cool. <laughs> Now for the next step, you don't have to fully clean your fan brush. Just make sure you get enough extra paint off with your shop towels. I'll just dab it on the shop towels down here on my table. It's okay if there's some, some white staining that fan brush. Because we're going to go into, well, uh, more white actually. And some phthalo blue. It seems that we have a mountain in this painting all the way in the back. And judging by the look of this painting, this mystery artist seems like they didn't use a knife for this mountain. They just used a uh, possibly a fan brush or a regular flat brush. I don't know, I'm gonna use my fan brush just, just to show you guys that it can be done. So it's, it's really quite simple. It's only one peak, one peak of the mountain. So it's not a, straight triangular shape but more more like a smooth one that doesn't make sense it's kind of wide like this and it's okay you have to be okay you know when you're painting your own version of things that it's not going to come out you know exactly the way it is and you, you could be painting an original painting of yours even and if you try to paint it again guess what it's still going to come out differently it is impossible to paint anything like verbatim. And there's going to be some changes that I'm going to be making to this painting too. Some things that I think can be better. Some some disagreements I have with the artist. <laughs> so and it goes all the way down there. It doesn't seem to be a uh, a misty part. It actually seems to touch the water. So I'm just going to stop right there once it does. But still, either way, we do have to worry about our source of light. Where's our source of light coming from? And I see a tiny, tiny bit of snow on the top of our mountains there. So I'm gonna go into thick white. Really just, really just need to load up the corner there. If it helps you or you feel more confident, you can go ahead and load the whole fan brush, that's fine. But just using the corner, I'm going to add the highlight. And the highlight seems like it's coming from the left side of the mountain, judging from the picture. And I can just lightly touch there at the very top. It goes down like that. And don't get too worried about making the same exact detail. All I know is that there's highlight on the top of that mountain, so that's all I have to do. Even if I want to put more highlight myself like this. That's cool too. You go ahead and you do the same. Or do it different. We're just painting along together. We're not competing. No, sir. All right, that's good enough to me. Now it's time to make the other mountain, which is right in front of that one, but closer to us. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that fan brush as much as I can with just, just the shop towels. You don't have to fully clean it with solvent just yet. If you're wondering how I do it, I just spin the brush, try to get as much of it as possible out. Always go in the direction of the bristles, just like that. And remember, you don't have to dip your brush in solvent to clean your brushes. You only do that if you absolutely have to. And if you're working with paint thinner or something like that or any other chemical, you should be painting outside or in a well-ventilated area. That's good to know. Now, I do use solvent myself, but as for what I use exactly, 
That's another mystery. Okay, so let's go into some more blue and I'm gonna pick up actually also some crimson just to just to keep it dark, just to get it darker than the mountain that we already made. Tiny bit of green, tiny bit of green actually, yeah. What this is going to do with the darker color, it's gonna give the illusion that this mountain is closer to us than this one. So even though it's closer, the peak of it is smaller than that. So I'm just gonna go like this. Just gonna worry about the upper edge first. And there we are. And I bring that down. Oh, it's kind of a wide mountain, right? Right there. Okay, and then I just fill that in. Oh, I think that color was perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right. And there seems to be a straight line where the bottom of that mountain meets with the water, which is a shame because, you know, I like making the bottom of the mountain very misty, which I guess I could have done so. But since I don't normally do this, you know what? I was up for the challenge. All right, so that's where it's going to stop. And now I just fill it in. And if you're feeling brave, you could have done this with a bigger brush if you wanted to. I make the top of that mountain a little bit sharper there. Okay. Uh, this one was supposed to be a little bit shorter than that one. I wasn't paying attention, but you know what? I'm not going to let it bother me. You dumbass. <laughs> I mean, what did I say before? You're not going to be able to always replicate <laughs> exactly someone else's artwork or even your own. That's just how it works. You have to accept that. No, I don't think I will. Go into some thick white color again. Thick white color. All right. And starting from the very top. Brighter highlights are towards the left. Yeah, there we go. I'll flip it over. And maybe it just blends away at the bottom. But we also seem to have some greenery shown on that mountain. That mountain has some hills there. So let's go into our sap green without cleaning the brush because I really like this color that's showing up. Look at this. It's going to look great when it mixes on there and our, hill, our hills are kind of going like this. I'm using the fan brush still. And it curves. There's a curve on the mountain like that. I haven't painted mountains like this before. I mean, I've done it with the fan brush, but you putting green curvy hills like this. This is a new one for me. So you're all you're all witnessing history here. And so if I mess up really bad, it's going to be on camera. It's going to be all over YouTube for, for YouTube and the world to see. Are you not ashamed of yourself? All right. Hey, challenge accepted. See, if I could be brave on camera, not knowing who's watching, you can certainly paint on your own at home. Come on, don't bullshit me. We have a, uh, oh, a big giant foothill, a big giant foothill going over here on the right, closer to us than the mountains. So this is good because it gives me a chance to show you how I clean my brush and solvent. Okay, first, I'm gonna try to get as much off with the shop towel, like I said. We'll come over here with that brush, dip it in my bucket of mystery stuff that's safe to use indoors. Maybe one day, if I get enough subscribers, I will tell the world what I am using. Come over here to the beater rack on the floor, give it a good shake, and just... Three hours later. Come on, 
Just beat it like my favorite Michael Jackson song. Now before we move on to making that hill, I just noticed we should make some dark under this mountain right here. So I'm just gonna pull down, just pull down. Right there. Try to keep the brush straight and leveled. Straight and leveled. Okay, let's pull down. Now we softly go across. There we are. Okay. Now, take a little bit of a thin white medium with the knife just like that. Put it down here in our palette. It's okay if you mix a little color in there. And just slice across. Slice across just like that. I was going to do this later anyway, but we should paint what's furthest away from us first. It's a bit of a rule there. Sometimes you can break that rule. I just want to play it safe. After all, I am filming a painting episode for the world to see. Everybody's a critic, right? I award you no points. And may God have mercy on your soul. And as for how to make these little ripples in the water, I still got to do it over here on the hill. So I'll wait to go over it then. I just really want to get to making this hill over here. Really excited for it. Let's take some phthalo blue and let's make a color, a dark color of that. Some sap green. easier to do this than mix on the brush. I find when I mix on the brush, I make a bigger mess on my palette and then like, I need more room later. So better safe than sorry. I get it. I don't get it. Now, we can take that two inch brush that we cleaned and load it up real well by tapping that in there. That mix of blue, green, and a little bit of crimson that we made. Crimson's just in there to make sure this paint stays dark. Right. Even though I loaded the whole damn brush, I'm really going to try to use the corner for an accurate portrayal of how I want the top shape of this mountain. Once you get the top shape how you want it to be, then the rest is easy to fill in. So I'm just using the corner here. It's a really big, steep hill. <laughs> and it goes over and down like this. right about there. Well, maybe I'll shape it out, keep the brush level and bottom here, and then just, yeah. So now I know how I want the shape of this mountain to be. There we go. I think our paint here is a little bit lighter than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna add more blue in there. And we need to fill this up now, so. This is the Clearly the biggest hill I made in a painting. Wow. Whoever this artist is, certainly not my style. And I think they painted it so traditionally. I don't think they used big brushes like this. Big two inch brushes. Just flat and angle shaders. Which is cool too. Maybe I'll do an episode like that. I am going to start incorporating those brushes a little bit more. Especially for the third season. I have a lot of good ideas for the third season. And once again, if you know who this mystery artist is from our reference photo that we're painting from, please comment below or help me search the internet. I couldn't find a clue who it was. And like I said, it's, it's not even my painting. Maybe it will be one day, but do I even want to take the painting out of the frame and risk damaging it? I don't think I should. You, you guys see how clumsy I can be. <laughs> All right, appears the mountain, or not the mountain, the hill does have some reflections. So I'm just gonna put it down here. You know, I'm not, I'm not too crazy about making these reflections right now because we're gonna have to keep making them with the bushes that we add right there. So 
This is just a reference, just a rough estimate of what's going to happen later. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because now we should put some highlights on this mountain. And we do that by going into our CAD yellow. Let's load that up real nice. And that's going to make quite a unique lighter green. Because we don't just have the sap green mixed on that brush. I didn't clean that brush, so there's blue in there. Let's see how that works out right now. Okay, lots of fuzzy greenery on this hill. That would suck to fall down this hill. <laughs> it's so steep. Or maybe that's fun for you. Hey, <laughs> no judgment here. And you're gonna need more of that highlight color. Look at that brush, it's full of color. And just tap it in, just keep tapping it. That's how you load the brush. All you gotta do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. And yes, we can go into yellow ochre as well. Just to mix it up a bit. We can put that here and there. We can go back over things we already went over. There we go. Biggest hill I ever made. And we tap on the canvas the same way we tapped onto our palette. This is really boring. You really need to up the energy level. I'm getting sick of this. Now to save time, I'm gonna not clean this brush. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna use it for later, much, much later. Let's uh, make sure we have enough of this dark color right here. We can always make more. Let's grab more blue, more green. I just wanna make sure I have enough. Don't wanna run out of color mid brush load. That would be embarrassing. A little bit of crimson. And flatten that out just like that. Now this is where the one inch brush comes in. I'm gonna take that one inch brush and go into that pile of paint and pull downwards, pull downwards like this. That's how we load that paint onto the brush. This creates an effect for the bushes on this hill. Which is right on the bottom of the hill here, and you can see how that's rounding out the brush on the bottom. Except we're going to flip it over because that's that's the side we need. Flip that over, make sure there's a lot of paint loaded, and we got one bush sticking out here, touching those mountains like that, and just press onto the canvas. That's the first bush. And we, well, we got one, two, three, four bushes there. So we gotta, gotta make more of these. All right, so that's fine. It's fun enough. I don't mind at all. And that's why this color needs to be dark so we can have some, some different values to see where these bushes are. As it goes against that mountain that we had the highlights in, now we can see it. Can't see these bushes unless they're dark. And if our background is not light enough. Bet you never thought about it like that, huh? And you really need to try it to really get it. I believe in you. I believe you can do it. I also believe you can take the one second it takes <laughs> to hit that like and subscribe button below if you haven't already. All right. Do you remember how I said about the reflections in the water? Well, I'll do it with a clean, dry two inch brush right now. Since I said that highlight brush, we're gonna save for later. Unfortunately though, if that's your only two inch brush, you are gonna have to go through the whole cleaning process. So keep that in mind. It really helps to 
you know, always have two of, at least two of the same brushes. Okay. And these reflections here seem to get smaller and smaller as it gets towards the edge. That's because it gets to the lighter side and that source of light right here. The further it gets away, the darker that water is going to be. All right. And very gently. We went down, now we go across. We do this very, very gently. Back and forth. Okay, we might have to do it again because we're going to we're gonna have highlights here. All right. Went a little too far out here because I have a dirty brush, but just blend it away. See? Just blend it away. Don't freak out. Just blend it away. And there you go. It's gone. And just like that, it's gone like, a, like an angel's kiss. All right, now without cleaning that brush we used to make these uh, bushes or maybe they're small trees, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take that brush, go into some thin white medium. And I always pour a little bit more in my tray than I need from just priming the canvas. And this is why. I'll go into my burnt sienna color here. And I don't use this color that often. I should, I should use it more often. It's a really nice color. I can also go into yellow ochre too if I want. Paint is so thick, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Maybe just a tiny bit of red. I'll go over here. It looks like we have more of an earth toned highlight on this bush. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. This bush or this tree, I don't know what it is. I just know this is a nice picture that I would like to paint. There we go. And leave a lot of dark showing still. What did we say? We need dark to show the light. And I'll actually save this dirty brush now. I'll put it down. And once again, I'll pick up a clean, dry one inch brush right here. Because I want to make some, some green highlights. There we go. Good indication to know if you've loaded enough paint. So if you see those ridges, and we curve that brush down. See? And something to keep in mind about highlights. You load all this paint onto your brush, yet it's such, such a gentle touch that you really only end up using so much of that color. You got to think of this color being used is only like... <laughs> Just 12% of what's on your brush when you put these highlights on. We're just not even painting color onto our canvas. We're placing it. See? See, I'm very careful not to move and spread and sweep the brush around. That's what matters. Okay, let's go into some variation of color right here. We have it, so why not? Okay, start from the top. So this way, as our highlights come off our brush and get lower and lower, paint comes off naturally. There we are. And some of those highlights are down in the water here. You don't have to go too crazy. And I will show you why. Where's that other dirty brush we had? This is why it helps to have at least multiple brushes of the same, the same brush, same size. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to paint and teach and talk at the same time. Take a fairly clean, dry two inch brush. This is good enough. Just wipe it on some shop towels. And what have we been doing? Yeah, we just go down like that. Not too far down. Once you get to the edge, it's really only like, you go down only like, I don't know, half an inch. No more than a half of an inch. All right. Then very lightly, we go across. Great. Wonderful. It helps to speak softly. That's, that's the light touch we use. Uh, Let's 
see, just blends away, no worries. All right. Holy smokes. Now with our thin white medium on our palette knife, since we're a little bit closer, I can explain to you in more detail how to make those ripples. I'm keeping my knife level, keeping that blade horizontal like this, see? And firmly, you can do use a firm touch with this. Keeping that knife leveled and only using strokes left to right. I have several questions. For those of you beginners out there, yes, this is a palette knife. This is a blade, but do not worry. The canvas is still tough, especially if it's primed with gesso. It's cotton fabric but it's not strong enough to cut a hole <laughs> into, the, into the canvas. Don't worry, that will not happen. See? There we go. Step back from your painting, level this out a little better. Just slice across. That's all you gotta do, slice across. And just keep the knife level, and vary it left to right. And maybe just one more ripple, we'll put it right here, just to show you, you will not rip the canvas. I promise you, your canvas is safe and there will be absolutely no holes or rips into your canvas. Are you sure about that? Uh, you know what? Now might be a good time to take our break while I figure out what to do with this. All right, folks, now it's that time I show you some paintings from other people. First off, we have a painting from my friend Jess, who's done a scene here with a beautiful sky and some nice looking trees. Now, she painted this in acrylic, which I give her a lot of credit for, considering it's more difficult, in my opinion, to create reflections in the water. But <laughs> she did it perfectly. So I do sure hope you make more time to keep painting because I can see you got some skill here. And we have a whole bunch here from my friend Mason, one of the many artists I've been speaking with on social media lately. Now, Mason has only just gotten back into painting after 35 years. See, folks, it's never too late to keep your art in your lives. I loudly and proudly show off paintings and artworks of all types from all other levels of skill. Remember, all you need to do is muster up the courage to put some color on your canvases with your brushes, and you are an artist in my book. Great work, Mason. Keep it up, and I'll speak to you soon. And of course, we're back here once again featuring artwork from Glenn Woodington, our friend Glenn. It's always great to hear from you and talk about art. Look at this one here with the cherry trees against the backdrop of a sky resembling the American flag. And here's the same one again, only daytime. Wow, how creative. But I have to say, Glenn, this one here is my favorite, and apparently this is what it looks like where Glenn lives. Wow, I sure hope I can live in a place like that someday. Just got to be careful about that alligator in the water. And a couple from our friend Bob Daniels, of course. Bob was our guest on the last episode here on Kenny's Greasy Paint. Be sure to follow Bob on Instagram to check out all his work. Leave a comment, ask him questions, and just like me, he's always engaging, always talking about art and messing around and experimenting and learning new things every day. Talk to you soon, Bob. And now we have an absolutely beautiful seascape here, one of the best seascapes I have ever seen. This one's from Gabby the Oil Painter. I really wish we could see more of her work. Actually, we are going to see more of Gabby's work right now and speak with Gabby herself. All right, everyone. We have here today an artist who I have been very much looking forward to as a guest on today's episode. Now, you see me do these interviews as a little break during my episodes to help promote and support other artists. But I have to tell you, um, this lady here has interviewed so many more artists than me. If any of you have been following a few oil painters on YouTube, Gabby here has either interviewed them already, and if not, I think she'll get to them soon. But I think it's time now to give back to her, put her on the other end of the interview seat, talk about her and her art, give her a well overdue chance in the spotlight right now. Folks, let's welcome Gabby, the oil painter. <laughs> Gabby, thank you so freaking much for being with us today. How the hell are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. Happy to have you. So, you know, let's yeah. just get into it. Uh, how did you get into painting? Is it something you've always wanted to do? And how long have you been doing it for? Um, so I started 
painting. I painted in high school, but painting with oils um, during COVID, my son stayed home and he took online classes and he wanted to do an art project for one of his classes. And he's like, I want to paint. And I'm like, well, we'll just sit down and watch some Bob Ross and paint. And I realized that Bob Ross doesn't paint with oil. That day I went out, I bought oil paint and I've been painting ever since. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So oils are the medium that you've always done, right? Yeah. I mean, I did acrylic in high school, but serious painting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there any other form of art that you do? Um, I used to do a lot of like jewelry making and stuff like that, but, um, now I don't have time cause all I do is paint. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, ho hopefully you find time to do both. And if you do, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll promote your jewelry on, on here too. If you get back into <laughs> awesome. it, cause your paintings are really good. Uh, Thank a you. lot of great scenes you do. And my favorite piece of yours is the tropical beach scene and how vibrant the colors are. Uh, what do you love most about painting? And if there's anything at all, what do you hate about it? Um, yeah, okay. What do I love most about painting? Um, a lot of stuff. I just love that it gives me peace. Um, I don't paint for anybody but myself. Um, and I also I also love that it's kind of brought me into a community of painters. Um, that's been really special. Um, I'm not a big fan of having to clean paintbrushes. That's probably the one thing I hate most about it. <laughs> A little time consuming. Yeah. 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 Really, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You know what? I, I didn't, never thought of it that way. I, th I think I feel that way too. Yeah. <laughs> just, and especially when I forget, like, okay, I'm ready to do this painting. Damn it. I didn't clean my brushes. <laughs> I got to do that now and everything gets delayed. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's talk about your channel and how you have pretty much at this point for me, I've interviewed every YouTube oil painter that I know of, including me, which was great. And thank you again so much for that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. What motivates you to make such a bold move to reach out to all these artists and give them a platform? Um, I wanted to originally interview myself for my channel just to be able to tell people who I am. And then I was like, wow, I bet there's other artists out there who would love to have that opportunity to be able to sit down and talk about themselves and not have to be just paint, paint, paint and teach, teach, teach. And so that's kind of where it came from. And then I started reaching out to people and I was really surprised at how many people were willing to do it. And that's just, it's just kind of snowballed from there. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun though. Uh, it's that's so nice and kind of you to reach out and give back like that. And, you know, I think we as artists easily say yes, because we long for the, the support and, yeah. but, you know, I also want to mention to everyone that you have a how to playlist on your channel, covering topics from washing paint brushes, cleaning your mixing palettes, trying out over 60 brands of oil paint. <laughs> That's that's that was a really good video. What yeah. brand of oil paint do you personally recommend for wet on wet painting? Um, I think overall affordability, quality, if you kind of put it all together and make it zero in on one place, probably the Winton paint line. I have a lot of other ones that I really like, but affordability, availability, Winton is probably I think the best one out there. So. Uh, you know, I, I'd have to tend to agree with you. Yeah. Um, for anyone watching, you know, if you, you have a cheap, a cheap brand of oil paint, but you know, you want to try that first or you don't want to waste it, uh, if it's too oily or whatever, you know, you can always use the, the cardboard technique or where you just let it, let the extra oil from the pigment, you know, absorb in the cardboard and that, that'll help. You know. Uh, do you sell your art? I do. Um, I have kept a running count. I've been selling my work for under two years now. Um, I've sold after this past weekend about 675 pieces. What? So yeah, I sell a lot. Whoa. All right. <laughs> I, am, I have a lot more to learn from you than I thought. <laughs> uh, what's, yeah. What's your, do, do you sell these in person? Do you do um, uh, shows or yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't do a whole lot of online stuff. I like to meet with the people that are actually buying my work. So I do a lot of like, um, just like 
art fairs and craft fairs, and um, I also do historical reenactments. So I bring my paint along with me, and I paint there, and I sell, and yeah, it's worked out really well. Uh, that that is so freaking awesome. All right, yeah, I got to do more showcases. I got to figure out the time. Of, yeah, but uh, you know, what? I think I would rather do that anyway, like sell in person, and like because I do sell online a lot. People who reach out to me, and then like, well, then you know. I like the process of taking commissions too, but then I got to pack it up or I got to wait for it to dry and then I got to send it out. And then it's like, yeah. And like this person already paid me and they're probably thinking, Oh, where's my painting? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it puts a little pressure on me, but mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, on behalf of everyone watching and to speak for all the artists that you have interviewed on your channel, I want to thank you for being with us today. And what I want people to take away from this interview is that, I see Gabby as the central core of YouTube artists when it comes to oil painters. I'll bet I'm not the only one who sees your channel and goes, oh my God, she interviewed this artist and this artist? I, I know them. I you know, I I've seen their videos and you've also exposed artists that I haven't heard or seen their work and they're very talented and they're artists I want to get to know as well. You, you, it's like you've united and linked all of us, which is so commendable because artists supporting artists is so important not just for us but for the new and everyday average people who are just getting into the art community or who want to get into it and i personally recommend to those people to start with you because there's so much information and there's so much to learn from uh, so many different artists and it can be overwhelming but you have made it easy for the world and i can't tell you how much i respect you for what you do as well as your art and your skill. The art community is now a better place and it's single-handedly your fault. <laughs> uh, so please keep it up and don't ever, ever stop. Yeah, well, it's been an honor for you to you know, take some time and have me on. I really do appreciate it. And um, I really do, I want all of us to be a community. And I think that, you know, I tried to try to do that. I wanna give back, so. Yeah. Uh, you're if it's one thing you're doing better than the rest of us, it's, it's your communication and giving everyone a platform. And I can't say it enough. And uh, so with that being said, take this time right now to tell everyone where to find you and all your social media plugins, where everybody can see your work. Yeah. So basically um, I just do YouTube um, at Gabby, the oil painter. Also, I do have a TikTok at Gabby, the oil painter. I'm not great at using it. And then you can find me actually on Facebook um, under Jocelyn Gabby Ackerman Sickle. So if you want to find and hook up with me and, and have more connection with me, those are the best places to do it. Commission a painting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't know you had a TikTok, so I'll, I'll follow you back on there. And, uh, you know, I, I have TikTok, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not fond of using it, but hey, it's another platform to expose your art. So you got to keep yeah. up with that. <laughs> uh, so everyone, please support, subscribe, follow Gabby on all those platforms. Uh, Gabby, is there anything else you would like to say to everybody in the world? Anything I didn't ask you that you would like to talk about? Um, it's just really quick, you know, I, I paint because I absolutely love painting. And if you need to find peace in your life, if you want to have a new hobby, if you want to spend a lot of money and not get a whole lot back, um, <clears throat> try painting. <laughs> not, I mean, it, it's actually worked out, you know, for me a lot better than that, but just... <laughs> just try it. You never know until you try it. And everybody I've ever talked to and ever painted with, they all have loved it. So. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I'm really happy that you're down with the idea of, you know, you're painting for yourself. Uh, paint to express, not to impress. And, you know, everything else after that is just a bonus. Mm -hmm. So you, you never know. And you know, you could be a lot more successful at it than you originally thought of. There's things that you can discover down the road that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I, we have to say this because there are people out there probably watching right now that, you know, that they're afraid. They like they're, they feel like the world is too judgy for them to, you know, just put that color on the on the canvas. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like to know that we're we as artists are here for them. Yeah. Well, and screw the world. 
And there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 basically it. You're like you know, it's, it's do it for you. And people yeah. are gonna critic criticize you no matter what. So you might as well just do it. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you for being with us. And uh, we'll we'll have you on again next season. Yeah. Okay. Sounds right. great. Awesome. All right, Gabby. We'll see you. All right. Bye. All right, let's continue. We're gonna take a, a different two inch brush, which is clean enough. It's fairly clean. Go into that dark color we made, the dark color we used for the, the trees and the bushes here and the base color for the, the hill there. And we gotta make one big tree closer to us right here. I've loaded it the same way and I see, okay, right there. Just go for it, don't be afraid. There we go. Easy enough. And remember the other two inch brush that we had? One that I didn't clean with all the highlight color on it? Well, there is a reason for that. It saves time. I just gotta reshape that brush a little. I'm just gonna go like that. Try to round out that edge too, and because we're gonna we're gonna place highlights using that rounded edge like this. So keep in mind where your source of light is. There we go. Not too worried about the right, not just because of the source of light, but you got to put a different kind of tree there. There we are. So I'm gonna put that brush down. That was easy and that was fast, but do have to clean this one off. Let me do that with the shop towel, get as much paint off as possible. And dirty one side, just flip it over. And there we go. Let's get rough with it. I'm gonna now load that brush into some Van Dyke Brown. Look at the same way. Try to curve the end of that brush, the bottom end, just curve it. And you're gonna flip it over. But even though this next tree we're gonna put is smaller, it goes right in the front of it, like that. Not too worried, not too worried about getting it exactly like it is in the painting because it's not gonna happen anyway. You just have to accept that. You have to accept that imperfection is perfection. Yeah, I like that. Bet you never thought about it like that, huh? Nothing's perfect, but it doesn't have to be because it can be better. It can be better. All right, thin white medium. Let's try to use the rest of it. Yeah, and go into our, our burnt sienna right here. That's what the color looks like. And right there. Oh yes, that is a great color. Yep, I like it. I hope you do too. No, don't like that. When I say you, I mean the one that you're creating and you're painting right now. Do a touch of red and a touch of crimson. Mix that up a little. You know what? I was going to say, if you want to, use the one-inch brush to add these highlights. Now, you know what? Challenge yourself. Don't. Stick with this big brush. Some people find this brush scary to use. Nah. You got to use it. You have it, don't you? It's a shame. It would be a shame not to use it. There we go. Impressive. Very nice. I thought I had enough shop towels for this painting, but of course, like an idiot, I ran out. I took a risk, took a shot, and I failed. But that's all right, just use the regular old paper towels. Remember, follow the bristles. Get as much paint off as you can. Sorry right if there's a tiny bit, and you just crumple it up real tight and good. And then you just throw it away in the garbage. Because what we have to do next is, you know what, let's take, let's take all the rest 
our phthalo blue, a little bit of this crimson, of course, all the rest of this sap green. Because we got a lot of darkness to make in this foreground here. All right. We are going to need it. And just to cheat a little bit, that's kind of why I have the black over here. Let's take it. Hopefully I laid out enough paint. And just give it a good mix. Just want this color to be dark. Just to make sure that now I'm going to cheat a little bit more too and grab some Van Dyke Brown. All your dark colors. As things get closer to you in a painting, the darker they get. So. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. I'm gonna go into this dark color, load it full of paint. You can do it like that if you want. We're gonna need quite a lot, so. Comes out here. What the hell is this? This is like a big rock or something. Another rock here. Boring. And there we are. Good enough. And we can just fill all that in. Don't matter. I do like the dark color I made though. Because most of this is going to be highlighted anyway. So it's not going to be a big deal. Before we add those highlights in, though, I do see, I do see that some rock formation under this. So let's use that by going into our Van Dyke Brown. And actually, no, I'm going to use the Sienna. I'll use the Sienna. And just fill that in. The knife right there. Okay. Wow, this mystery painting, if you're painting along, so I don't know how many people are going to paint along to this one, but nobody knows where this came from. <laughs> All right. shake this out. This is going to come out a little bit more. There we are. More rock over here. Fix this up. Sort of curve that two inch brush. There we are. Now, Oh, you remember this thing? The big two and a half inch brush, or two inch in your case. The one I said I'm not gonna clean off for this very reason. So here's all our highlights. There we go. As it gets further away from that light source, the darker it's gonna get. Well, that makes sense. The more you tap, if you happen to put a little too much highlight for your taste. All you gotta do is just tap. You just tap and it goes away. It's that simple. You really can't mess up. You can't make a mistake here. I mean, obviously you can, but there's always a way to get around this technique. There's always a way to fix things. You just have to believe that. So never give up. Believe, believe, believe. No ochre, too. We have it. Shouldn't forget about it. It's too bright, too vibrant. You just tap and it goes away. A lot of times you either just keep tapping something or you brush it away in this technique. And that's the beauty of it. If you don't like something, 
you fix it. There we go. We This wouldn't look as good if we didn't have that dark in. So that's why we do it. I think it's a little bit lighter here. That's fine. It can go into a tiny bit of white if we want. Just a tiny bit. Show where it's lightest. There we go. When you tap the brush for these highlights on the grass, it gives it that grassy texture. You'll see when your painting dries up. That's why it's worth it to do it that way. Huh, seems legit. Now we have two big giant trees to make here in the foreground. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, or the most fun way to do that is where the number five palette knife will come in. So if you have a smaller palette knife, that's what I suggest using for this. Take a little bit of that umber and mix it with the Van Dyke Brown. Actually, you know what, before I do that, before I put paint on my palette knife as well as the canvas, let me decide where's the best place to put this tree. So just take, just take the edge of the knife and scratch in roughly where you think it's gonna go. This one's all the way at the edge, and it comes down like that, I guess. Yeah, that's good enough. And it comes down like this. This is gonna be so awesome to me. A little bit of an irritating noise, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, just using the size of that palette knife, the natural width of it, I'm gonna scrape and wiggle a little bit. What that's gonna do, I'm gonna wipe away that paint to allow this dark color that I gotta put on to go on there a little bit easily. Yeah. Oh, look at that. We can see where that tree's gonna go now. So, flatten out our paint, get a nice roll, get a nice roll like this. And firmly just go down, follow that curve you made. It's a smaller knife, so you'll run out of paint a little bit faster. That's okay. And I should worry more about getting the dark on the right side, because we can cheat and have the highlights cover this. So don't worry about that too much. Don't worry. Since we're putting on the trees like this, we will have a lot of texture in the foreground. And I like that, especially in the foreground, because as things are painting closer to us, the darker they are. It's almost like 3D. You can reach out and touch those trees and those bushes and leaves. It's great. And just keep doing that. Put as much paint on the canvas as it takes. Now for the really fun part, what I'm going to do is, what do we have here? Let's see, let's make it a little bit darker at the bottom. Mm -hmm. and you can go firmly with the knife here. So if there's a little black on the bottom, that's fine. Let's take a highlight color of we've got some green in there that's okay yeah you know what blue yeah we have some blue in there this is not traditionally the color i would personally make but i'm willing to try new things let's lighten that up a bit and i got that's the second time that has happened to me but you know what at least it's not like how it was in the beginning of this painting hold on a second let's clean this off and just like on our canvas you rub it away. Rub it, and it goes away. And just like that, it's gone like a, like an angel's kiss. Now, where the hell were we? Okay, yeah. Making a highlight color. Let's just finish putting some darkness up here. Okay. Highlight color, yeah. Let's add a little white. That's what we're doing, right? to this ugly greenish bluish 
black color. I don't know. I don't even know what color it is. Pull it out. And where's the brightest spot on our tree? Right there. I'm just going to pull. Pull just like that. There we go. And if you're running out of paint, just try to use what's already on there. In this case, less is more. My foot's there too. And you can keep messing around with it. Maybe a little something down here. Okay, fill this in. If you want to dull anything, just clean your knife off. Just wipe it off on your towels. And this is what happens when you have a clean knife. And you can make it blend into that darkness a little better. And you don't have distinct differations. Differations, is that a word? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm just making words up now. That's okay. We're making up this painting. Actually, we're not. We're copying it. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm starting to lose my mind. You have no idea what you're doing. But that's okay, because we're going to make another tree the same way, except using the regular number 10 knife the same way we did here. So where does it go? Well, let's make a little guide first. So maybe comes down. This is a nice crooked tree comes down and a little bit over the other one there we go like that and this would be i guess right around here and it goes down on this oh. and there we go so let's just scrape that off right now scrape real hard very firmly It can't get worse, right? It can and it will, and here it is. You did not have to do that. You knew you did not have to do that. How could you have done that? Can you live with yourself? I gotta make trees like this more often. This is really fun to do. <laughs> Usually I just load up a fan brush or whatever and just go for it. That's cool too, but see, that's why I wanted to do this painting. It forced me to do something different, even though I'm using the technique I'm familiar with, and I think that artist, you know, whoever they are, used a different technique, more traditional, that's fine. Big, thick tree. More paint. Let's put some black in there. And you pull the paint out flat with the knife and you load it by scraping it up like that. Okay, so. And there we are. Firm touch. Remember, firm touch. Spreading that paint down there like that. Okay. How does that look? Let's touch up the edges over here. And I'm just doing that the same way we would put highlights on. Just want some darkness here. It's a lot of paint because it's a big tree, a big tree in the foreground. It's very close to us. I'm just going to love the texture that this is going to give off. And as always, if you guys ever have any questions, you just comment below and I will try to answer them as best I can. For those of you who do comment and do engage, thank you. Thank you so much for your support in this channel. Keeps me inspired, keeps me going. All right. 
be a bit of yellow ochre. Why not? We have it. Give it some gold in that color. Spread out. Grab it there. What's the brightest spot? Eh, it's around here, I guess. I'm not going to think about it too much. Now, the highlights are a gentle touch. They are a gentle, gentle touch. It's not firm like we were putting on the base color there before. And we go up here, we pull a little. There we are. Add a little bit more green in our highlight. Just because we're making highlights here, it doesn't mean we can't make variations of different values of color. We are absolutely allowed to do that. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my knife, see what happens when I take a clean knife and just, just mix it like that. Light touch, remember, very, very light touch. Step back from your painting, teeniest bit of highlight on the other side. Maybe it's reflecting from the water here. I did not put a lot of paint on there. And I suggest you don't either because it'll just ruin that effect. The highlight on the right side of the tree is not going to be as strong as the left. Oh, you remember that one inch brush we had for the dark highlights here? Well, let's go back into it. We got bushes in the foreground too. Probably the closest thing to us. Right there. Use up some black. And use up all that color if we want to. Yeah, there we go. We got some bushes coming out here. Awesome. Gotta have dark to show the light. Can't say it enough. And that other brush we had with the highlights. Glad I laid out enough paint. Look at this. I had just enough. People always say, well, I know what colors you're using, but how much paint do I put on my palette? And it's really hard to say, because you know, you don't want to run out of paint. But you don't also, you want to put enough paint on your palette so you don't have that fear that you're going to run out. But as you paint and you practice and practice, because that's the secret to getting good at anything, especially painting, you'll just get to know. You just know how much paint to use, what not to use. So my advice to you is just stop sitting around, grab those brushes, grab those paints, and go to town. Create something. And last but not least, we can take a liner brush and go into linseed oil or any kind of medium or solvent if you have it, and make some details. Because, you know, if you, if, let's just say I were to just use straight up paint on such a small brush, you'll have it, you'll find it, it's very hard to see that it's sticking. So that's why we go into our medium. I have that brush right now and see that? And I have to use more. I have to use more of that stuff to thin it out. Otherwise it won't stick. We have so many layers of paint up there already. I'll twist it around. Grab a little bit of highlight, just a little bit. Have so many layers of paint 
This is the only way it'll stick. See? You add as many of these grassy blades as you want. You decide where they should be. I'm not going to go crazy looking at the painting right now, even. <laughs> I don't want to do that. With the same type of technique, with the same thing that we're doing, to thin out our medium a little bit, or our paints, using medium to thin out our paints, we got to do that with the browns here too, because let's make some branches on these trees. If your paint and your medium is sliding down your canvas, that's a good indication that that's how much you have to use. That's a good indication that you're loading that liner brush up the right way and that's going to be enough. You, f you find it doesn't stick and it doesn't flow, you're just simply not using enough medium to thin out your paint. And also too, try to use, when you're making branches, the very tip, the very tip of that brush. Don't, don't let, don't go like that. It's just like a, a ballpoint pen that, that you're trying to use. And this is one part of this painting that I'm gonna be extremely diff different in and I'm gonna make more branches than the original painting has. You put as many branches on the tree as you want. You don't have to put any, put any at all. You decide. Okay, and you will find that the annoying part about this is you have to go into thin paint quite a lot. That's just how it works. That's just how it is. See, I run out real fast. That's because it's a small brush, you know? So it's not going to hold a lot of paint. You have to go into that thin medium, you have to thin out your paints quite a lot. Hmm, not bad. I will also go up here to the other tree. Can't forget about that tree. Don't want to. And maybe a branch or two up there. Maybe out here, sure. We are nice now before I say I'm done did I forget anything in this painting it looks like there's like two little sailboats all the way in the middle here by that mountain just gonna try my best to duplicate that add some white and this could be a disaster here who knows got a little bit a little bit of a roll just a little bit of a roll on my smaller my smaller palette knife, and I'm just going to go over here. I could mess this painting up pretty bad right now. And there, I guess. And oh, there's two. I have to make two. That's right. All right. Maybe I'll just half load it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's only half of the palette knife that's loaded because this other little sailboat is smaller. That's pretty cool to know that two friends are out sailing like that. And I'm going to take the very, very small part of the blade, that one, and get a tiny roll like that. Yeah, it's very tiny. Trust me, that's all you need. And this is even if you want to put this in the painting. Okay. Well, there we are. Wow. All right, folks. Hey, you know, it may not be my personal original painting, but I made it my own as best as I can. Send me pictures if you painted along and definitely comment below and contact me if you know who the original artist is. But as for my version, I don't know. What do you think? I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog Okay, well in that case, I'm glad it's not my original work because I'm off the hook then. So, 
Till next time, keep your dreams high and your pompadours in the sky. Let's paint together.